If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman, spiritual coach. And I'm here, as always, on Mondays with my co-host and fellow spiritual coach, Joshua Radawan. And we are talking today about karma's a bitch, but is it gluten-free? <laughs> Navigating the moral high ground. So this one's going to be a fun one. <laughs> and thanks, as usual, to Josh for these amazing titles. So, Josh, you know, karma is an interesting concept, right? It certainly so, is. Uh, you know, it's something I didn't believe in for most of my life, you know, mostly because I was kind of an asshat through most of my 20s and early 30s. So, you know, when I when I went through my spiritual awakening back in 2017, it was funny how I began to see the patterns of how my former behaviors were being mirrored to me by my those closest to me in my life. Some of the uh, the swindling I had done as a, you know, you know, in in alcoholism and addiction, I began to see the patterns in other people. And at, at first they came to me like very harsh because, you know, spirit, you know, like you say, you know, it was a little bit of a clue by four, you know, like when I look back, I, I could see that I was racking up a, a debt in a certain way. At the time I didn't, you know, I didn't believe in, in, in anything at the time. So, you know, when it, when it came a calling, and the debt does seem to come a calling, either you know whether it be in this life or the next life. I I have to say, you know, I've since being able to recognize patterns more. I've also began to see when something comes into my life to be able to clear karma, right? Like I I I see those opportunities. So karma, you know, it's uh, I think it it can be a bitch, but. It can also be gluten free, right? Like it doesn't have to be so heavy all the time. But it's it's a matter of whether you get the lesson and you can kind of move through it. There's a couple of ways to look at karma. Karma is it comes out of the Hindu tradition, and the the concept of, and we should define it. <laughs> so the concept is that you know what you put out is what you get back, and you know if you do dirty, then you get dirty done to you sort of thing, right? And, you know, from that perspective, it exists in the Hindu tradition. The other way to look at it is through the universal laws or through a law of attraction, right? And that is the idea of what you focus on expands, what you put out is what comes back to you. You know, it's, it's life is a reflection of you, right? And so in either case, it works pretty much the same, right? It's, you know, how, how does it, how does it go? Right. So for instance, I was told in a reading, Oh God, I don't know, 25 years ago that I, I had lived a life as a princess in some Eastern country. And I had been so generous in that life that I, that nothing bad would ever happen to me in this life. It was written in my stars and literally in my astrology, in my natal chart. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. And, you know, so there's, there's all of that, but the, so, you know, it can go lifetime to lifetime is basically what I'm saying with that, right? Not, not a go look at me story, but it goes lifetime to lifetime. Right. And so the, and, and to be fair, I've had, I've been in a lot of situations that probably should have gone really badly and they didn't. And so I kind of buy into that. And so the, the thing that we want to pay attention to is not so much this. So this got sort of, I don't know how to say this. It got sort of twisted by the Judeo-Christian construct, right? The Judeo-Christian thing is, you know, God on high is standing in judgment over you, which is not at all part of the, the foundational belief structure out of which all these things evolved, right? And so, you know, that it makes perfect sense if you're looking at things from a political perspective and from a, you know, human perspective where, you know, hey, we want to control the masses. Let's tell them that they have to be good here so that they get better in the afterlife and, you know, all the things. And 
And uh, that's that's the ultimate manipulation, right? It's like, oh, you know, put up with the shit now so that you get it, get the good stuff later where you can't prove whether or not it actually happens, right? That That's the ultimate manipulation, right? But the, the, the general premise is still the same. It's just twisted slightly, right? Because if we are God and God is us, right? We are the universe. The universe is us. If you don't like the word God because of your religious trauma, I mean, we've all got it. Not all, but a lot of us. Then, uh, then the judgment, quote unquote, is simply the reflection that we're talking about, right? And so, you know, the, the challenge though, is that when you frame it as judgment is that then you, you introduce fear, and, you know, the fear of being judged and that fear will amplify itself and create its own problems. Right. So it's not really ideal. And then also we will bring that down into our beingness and go, oh, well, other people are judging us all the time because God judges us. Right. And so if God judges us and, and we are a reflection of God, then we will judge ourselves. And if we judge ourselves and we assume others judge us and then, oh, my God, the judgment everywhere. Right. Uh, even though. The Bible says, judge not lest you be judged, because that is the shit that happens, what I just described there, right? You know? So here's the thing. Karma is a reflection of both what you do and how you feel about what you did, right? Because you, if you talk to anybody who is known a sociopath or a psychopath, they don't get the consequences that other people get for their actions, it just, it doesn't happen very often. And that's because they don't think it's wrong. They don't have a moral compass. And therefore, unless somebody else's intention pulls it into being for them, they're not going to have any consequences because they don't believe it's wrong and they are God and God is them. Right? So, you know, you have to keep in mind also that the intention and belief structure that you hold with whatever it is you're doing is part of the process. Now, this is not me saying if you can kill your conscience, you should do it. <laughs> I am not saying that. <laughs> that is not gluten free. No, <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is that, you know, there is a, there is a, there's a need to really not judge yourself around this stuff as much right? We all make mistakes, right? We do our best to mitigate them and then we need to let them go and move on, right? Apologize, take responsibility, do whatever it is to fix it and then let it go. Beating up on yourself for having done bad stuff is only going to draw to you more retribution, if you will, yeah. This was such a huge karma. part of why I attracted more of the, the like into my life because, you know, for me, I knew what I was doing was, you know, it was not in alignment with who I am as a soul, right? And it didn't align with the morals I was taught as a as a kid, you know, even, even through a troubled childhood, you know, there was an instilling of, you know, just the more, you know, moral, moral high ground, you know, like just knowing to me what was right or wrong or my, my constructs around that. So when, when I finally, you know, had gone so far and it continued to, you know, when, when spirit started speaking to me and they're like, you know, like, this is going to get rough. All you got to do is stop. And I knew I was living wrong. And it just, you know, just kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. The lessons, you know, all the crossroads in life. Like I would just stand looking at, you know, just blank directions. It was just so many multiple times in life because I knew that I was chasing everything that was good out of my life by acting the way I was. And and it happened over and over again. But, you know, in, in, in going with what you just said, you know, when I stepped into my work with you, you know, I have to say, I, I, I did pretty well until I got to the judgment lessons. Uh, they, I mean, they, they've been, you know, other than, other than working through codependency, judgment and codependency and, you know, the, the, the rage or the, the anger, these were the, 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 the holy trinity of things that were really some of my 
you know, the things that I really needed the deeper level healing on that have that resurfaced over and over again. Um, but I, I, I do have to say, I, I, I've never, we've never talked about karma before, so I haven't heard it put like that. And it's, it's amazing. And also scary to think of all the sociopaths out there going karma free a little bit, but you know, it's, uh, yeah, you know, it's just a, a beautiful take on that. So thank you for thank you for sharing that. That hits home. Yeah. Well, and for those of you wondering, the judgment exercises that Josh is talking about are in the Welcome to the Woo program. That's the first program in our series. It's four months, and it's uh, it's a huge amount of content. It's 124 pieces of content in 120 days, which, but you know, not too terrible. It's 15 minutes a day on average, so it's not too bad. But uh, yeah, we we guarantee it'll change your life. <laughs> I'm sitting here. Cut your stress levels. We, yeah, we guarantee is it'll cut your stress levels in half in four months or your money back. And I've never given anybody their money back for, you know, because they said it didn't work. So, so anyway, the, the, and, and the, the rage exercises are in the second program in the series, which is the Wu squared one. So just to be clear about what's where in the system, it's not all in the same place. So how do we manage karma, right? How do we, how do we get karma to work on our side? Because karma works in both directions. Those of us coming from a Judeo-Christian background, we look at karma as a punishment technique, right? But karma actually works in both ways. If you put out good things, you get good things back, right? So, you know, I'm I'm, I'm actually rewatching The Good Place right now on uh, Netflix. I think it's on Netflix. Might be I don't know. I think it is. It might be Paramount. Anyway, but I'm re rewatching it, and they're talking about well, if you know there's a point system, then you can't win, and then you you're disqualified. Blah 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, it's not really a point system. It's not how that works, right? They're talking about how to get into the good place. So for those of you who've never seen the good place, it is this idea of, you know, what happens after we die and, and you know, do go to the good place or the bad place as in heaven or hell, right? And it's very funny. And it's very, it teaches moral philosophy as part of the work too, which is really funny. But it is also, you know, indicative of what, how people think about stuff. I always love to use modern media to reference things when I, whenever possible, because this is how we're programmed, right? We're programmed through media and what we consume. So it's very important to be careful what you consume, okay? One of the things I was talking about with one of my students recently was this idea that when you've been in violent situations, whether it's emotionally or physically, sexually violent situations early in life, that you are often very angry and that therefore you will watch a lot of content that is very violent, right? So for me, yeah, <laughs> Josh is raising his hand. I'm like, yeah, for me, the the violent content was, you know, NCIS and, you know, CSI and Law and Order, all of the Law and Orders and, you know, anything, Dexter and anything that was abnormally psychology based, right? And I used to actually read abnormal psychology books for entertainment. It was, you know, that I'm weird, but I'm not weird because that is actually part of what happens when you're in trauma from an early age is you, you are trying to work out the, the trauma and the anger and the violence actually is, is uh, cathartic in a certain way. It's like, Oh, it'll release some of this stuff. Yeah. Let me see them die. Right. You know? So there's this violence that's inside of us that is a function of having been hurt. Right. And so there's, there's importance to letting that out and releasing it in a healthy fashion, not on somebody else, right? And so this is one of the healthy ways that we, we do that, but it doesn't, it takes years <laughs> to do it that way. Don't recommend that way. We work a much faster path in the Wu Squared program, but yeah. I'm, I'm, Go not ahead, Josh. Gonna, I'm not sure that it helps me work it out. It, it almost taps me into that old philosophy sometimes, at least at this point in my journey. Like, yeah. you know, I've been watching the boys. Yeah, I don't watch uh, them anymore. I've been watching the boys on Amazon and it's, it's all about superheroes that are pretty much dicks and they just go around doing whatever yep. they want. And it's very violent. And I, you know, two years ago I, I was like, I love this show. And then I, I sat down with the new season. I was like, I don't like this anymore. <laughs> I was like, this isn't, you know, who I am, but you know, like there, there you were know, some, I will say. there were some shows for me that I, I will say did it help, you know, like I, I'm a huge fan of Kurt Suter and the way he writes, you know, like the shield and, you know, sons of anarchy and, you know, also 
you know, Breaking Bad, all of the arcs, the character arcs for me, that there was a lot of, you know, Shakespearean, you know, tragedy in, in the way that it was all written. And, 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 you know, like you see where it goes if you continue down the path, right? You know, like you see, you know, yeah. it, it all ends in a shit way, you know, and then that, and you can learn from that or you can buy into that's what I want to be, you know, so I, right. I think that kind of goes with what you're saying a little bit. Yeah. Well, I, I will warn you that if you go down this path, path far enough, it really destroys a lot of modern media for you. <laughs> I, I, I'm having a very hard time finding anything that I want to watch just because so much of it is still violent or super violent, like graphically violent, or because it is full of people that you hate. It's like, there isn't a single person in this show or movie that I actually care about. Right. And then I'm like, why am I watching this? I don't care about any of these people, right? So I'm, it, it does destroy that for you. But anyway, back to the topic of karma. Karma works in both directions, right? It works in the, in the direction of positive and negative, right? We, karma is inherently a duality-based concept. And so I'm going to talk about duality for a minute here. So duality is the, the state of I am me and you are you, and there is no in-between, right? That is... We are different people. That's where, where you get black and white, up and down, good and bad, right? Good and evil, you know, whatever, right? It is very clearly defined oppositions, right? And so within the very clearly defined oppositions, karma is a balancer of the judge's scales, right? That's the concept. Now, that is different it's fundamentally different than the energy of law of attraction. And that is whatever you put out is whatever you get back. That is not a duality dynamic. That is an experiential dynamic. And so on the levels of consciousness, duality is a lower level consciousness. Experience is a higher level consciousness that is based on just not judging your experience as good or bad, but just discerning whether or not it's an experience you want to have again, right? It's just, huh, okay, that was an experience. Did I enjoy it or not? Do I want it again or not? Right? It's different than saying this was and labeling it, right? Duality is labeling. Experience is, huh, do I want it again or not? So, it's, it's a different level. And thus, uh, you have to remember that if you're using karma as a, as a language that you are engaging in the duality dynamic, which is sometimes useful. So I don't think I've told this story on this podcast yet. I was doing a clearing of a curse for a guy who had a familial issue. And this, this shaman, generations before had been going mad and this guy's family had somehow ended up with this shaman believing he had some sort of delusion that they had done him wrong. And it was an absolute delusion. They had not done anything to him. And so he cursed them and then died. And then in the afterlife proceeded to follow the entire family line and curse every generation and would not leave them alone. I tried to get this guy to go of his own accord. And I was like, no, nah, he's, he's still nuts. He was a ghost. He was not, he had not crossed over. He was a ghost. And when you cross over as a ghost and you're already off your nut, you are going to be way the fuck off your nut several generations down the road because ghosts lose coherency and consciousness and, and rationality. You know, they, they focus in on a single thing and they become completely obsessed with that thing. And this was cursing this family for him and they cannot be moved because they don't have anything left. They are just lost. And so I was, I was at a loss. I'm like, what do I do with this thing? You know, because I didn't want to go toe to toe with this guy. Cause he was hardcore powerful. Right. 
And I'm like, I could, but it's going to hurt and I don't really want to. And <laughs> if I, if I can't figure out how to banish him and, and I, you know, I was pretty sure I probably could, but I just, I didn't want to, right. I didn't want to. Okay. So here's the thing when uh, we all have, well, not all, but a lot of us go into that warrior mindset and I'm talking to you right now, Josh. So <laughs> a lot of us go into that warrior mindset and we're like, oh, I'm the biggest bat in the room and I can make this go and I will beat the living crap out of this thing. And I'm like, yeah, 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 I can do that. Right. But be the grizzled old warrior in the corner who doesn't want to have the fight because you know it's going to hurt everybody and nobody's going to come out the, the other side happy and you know just be like dude just sit down and have a beer let's just let's just have a beer and have a chat right you know we don't need to fight right be that warrior because that warrior is smart they know that every battle you go into no matter how skilled you are there's a chance that you're going to get your ass kicked and so, you know, the chance is smaller and smaller the older you get, but the older you get, the less powerful your body becomes. And, you know, in a spiritual warrior, it's a little different because you, you build power over time and it doesn't really diminish until your brain starts to diminish. But nonetheless, don't take the hard path if you don't have to. So I sat there and I went, okay, what do I need? And I called the gods of karma because this guy, this guy had fucked himself hard, right? Because he had been cursing for generations, this family that did nothing to him, right? And so I called the gods of karma and said, explain the situation. And they went, we got it. He's ours. <laughs> and they just ripped him off of the family and wandered off with him. I have no idea what happened, right? But you know, much easier for a god to deal with this than for me. And thank you very much. All I had to do was say, Hey, thanks. Just bringing your attention to this guy. And they were like, thanks for the service. I'm like, you got it. Right? That was it. That was all I had to do. I had to think about it, pick a path, and just put a little ding in somebody's ear. Always a preferable path, right? So that's. I think that's going to be one of the things we end up talking about at our Adventures in Energetics retreat in oh, November is we'll, we'll probably end up talking about some curse clearing because we're the adventures in energetics retreat is for it's a not for beginners retreat. So this, I get to teach some more advanced techniques, which makes me super happy. Right. So, uh, yeah, we'll probably end up talking about that a little bit. I, but, I mean, when, when you set the list of what we were going to be working on down there, I was like, yeah. And then you're like, Oh, but we can also like go on these amazing tours. I was like, Oh, uh, there's more things other than the deep magic. I was like, so cool, you know, because <laughs> my mind is like, you know, like awesome. Like, you know, the, the things we had talked about, you know, the, the curse clearing and all the, you know, the advanced energetic work like that's going to take place. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be, I'm super excited for, to, to be going to this one. Yeah. Yeah. We're, well, we're starting with a Kundalini awakening on the first day. So <laughs> life's going to get more interesting from there. Yes. Okay. So, so we, we've referenced the good side of karma, but we haven't talked about it. So the good side of karma is the same thing as the good side of the law of attraction, right? It's like if you put out positive things, positive things come back to you. It's the same concept. And it's it's coming back to you from a reflective state, right? And, and it's very interesting because the good side of karma is operating pretty much the same as the law of attraction. It's not it, – it, I mean, it is – duality but it's not duality because there we don't attach judgment to it most of the time right i mean we say oh good things and then good things come back but yeah, somehow the negative we judge more than the positive right so it's a little less uh distant from the law of attraction than the negative side is but it's still from a duality perspective so but the basic concept of karma in a, in a good way is, you know, be a good person and good things come to you. Right. But the best story on this one is this guy who gets fired from his job and he is, instead of being upset, he's just like, Oh, well, okay. I'm just going to assume that it's for my best purpose. Right. And so he goes down and grabs lunch at a little diner downstairs from his work. And, and he sits down at the bar to the diner and he's just ordering his food and being kind to the waitress and doing the whole thing because, you know, life is working out for me. I don't know how, but it is. 
And this random businessman comes in and sits next to him on the bar stool. And, and he's like noticing how happy the guy is. And he says, Oh, Hey, how, how's your life? And he's like, well, I just got fired. He's like, I'm not really even sure why I got fired because I didn't do anything, but they said I was too happy and they didn't like it. And so I just figured that, you know, it wasn't the place for me and I'm getting meant to be somewhere else. And the guy said, really? He said, yeah. He said, so, you know, all right, well, guess what? I need a new person working in my department and you look like a perfect fit. You know, what, what were you making before? And the guy was like, well, I was making like 60 grand a year. And he's like, ah, that's nothing. We're going to start you at 120. And he's like, thanks. Got a new job. Didn't even apply for it. Right. But it, if he had gotten pissed off and been like, fuck this, blah, 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 this sucks, blah, 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 he might not have gone into the diner. He definitely would not have been in the mood for the guy to like, he'd been snapping at the waitress and bitchy. And the guy probably wouldn't have even sat next to him. He would have missed the opportunity entirely. Right. It's all about the attitude with which he took the, the news. Right. So when things shift for you, the goal is not to go into control and blame and shame and whatever. It's to go into, oh, the universe is conspiring to help me. Let me look for, let me see where that, that help is coming from. I'm going to look around and I'm going to just like figure it out. I'll be like, oh, is it over there? Is it over there? I don't know. He had a spiritual eviction, which is something Catherine and I are going to talk about on the podcast. Uh, so I'm not going to go into that today, but he had a spiritual eviction. And spirit said, nope, you don't belong here. Get out. Right. And so he, he took a path of positivity and therefore positive things happened to him. Right now I talk about this periodically. I'm going to say it again. Positivity for the sake of positivity is toxic spiritual bypass bullshit. Okay. So let me be really clear. Toxic the positivity for the sake of positivity is toxic spiritual bypass bullshit. Okay. Did you hear it? I wanted to make sure I said it twice so that you heard it because I hear so many people going, Oh, I'm just going to pretend everything is okay. No, 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 no. That is not what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is that this is a faith based belief structure, not a, I'm going to ignore everything that I know is wrong and put on a positive face. That is manipulation, right? That is you trying to manipulate the outside world into believing that something is true that isn't for you. This is what I'm talking about is truly buying into the belief, the faith that the universe is conspiring on your behalf and that everything hap that happens to you is happening for you. Okay. You there's a world of difference. There's a massive like Grand Canyon chasm between those two things. If you do not believe it, no amount of putting on a positive face is going to make a difference. And that positive face in the, you know, flying in the face of your lack of belief in it is spiritual bypass. Okay. You must buy into the belief that the universe is on your side and conspiring to for your best good, right? If you do that, if you can do that, it may be difficult for some people and, and there, there's a whole shebang as to why that is. But if you can do that and you know, then the universe will conspire on your behalf because you're buying into the belief, right? And your belief creates your reality and that reality comes to fruition. So, you know, there are some things up in the air in my business right now. I have no idea whether or not they're going to happen. And they're big things on which I based a lot of, I, I, I took a lot of risk and based a lot of stuff on it. And if they don't go well, then I'm like, mm, that could be bad. Right. But am I worried? No, because the universe is conspiring on my behalf and whatever path it sends me down, whether it happens or not will be the right path because I've told the universe what I want and the universe is just saying, okay, so I'm going to get you there. Remember we, we provide the destination and the motivation. The universe provides the navigation. And so the how is not my problem. My problem is just to keep going forward and to listen when the universe tells me no, right. <laughs> and be like, Nope, don't go down. Okay. I won't go down that path. Right. But this is what I'm talking about. 
That makes sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Faith over fear. So, faith over fear. Oh, I love that. Faith over fear. Yeah, that's great. All right. And I think that's a great thing for us to end the episode on faith over fear. Don't forget to like subscribe and share. We appreciate your support and this is how we grow and this is how we get seen in the world. So if you really enjoy any of these episodes, please share them with your friends. Uh, please subscribe and, and rate so that we get seen by more people. And don't forget we've, we've got, no, I think the drawings will probably be done by this one comes out. <laughs> this one comes out. So I'm not going to say that, but you know, please, please subscribe, please share, please rate. It helps us to get seen. So that's it for today. Don't forget that what you focus on expands. What you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Show